how to animate captions like this in Premiere Pro. First up, click on the text icon, head to the program window and type in your caption. The font I'm using is Inter Black. So head over to Properties, then scroll down to Align and Transform to center it with these icons here. Now for this effect, we want to separate the clips into separate clips according to the amount of words in the caption. So this caption has four words, so we're going to create four clips and then we'll move each clip along to bring each word in one after the other. But of course, each clip is still a full sentence at the moment. So to turn each one into a single word, the easiest way at this stage is to crop each clip. And to do that, select the clip and go to this icon here. But with text clips, the crop option isn't actually there. So to get around that, we just need to turn the text clip into a nest. To do that, right click on the clip and select nest. Name the nest, press OK, then select the nest. Now when we go to this icon here where the crop should be, it is actually there. Once crop is selected, you can see the crop bounding marks around the edge of the monitor. You can drag those in to crop out whatever you don't want. So for the first clip, we want to leave the word animate visible. So then for the second clip, we're going to do the same process. Nest it, name it, press OK, select the clip, hit the crop icon, move the playhead along to the second clip so we can see what we're doing, then crop everything other than the second word, which is captions. And then just carry on, same process for the other two clips. And if we move the playhead back and play it, we've got the words coming in one after the other. I'm going to move the clips in a touch to make each word come in a bit quicker. Then we just need to animate the words. So head up to effects, search for transform, and drag that onto the first clip. Then hit this effects icon here to go to effect controls. And the reason we're going to use transform is because it has motion blur. So under transform, to set the motion blur, go to shutter angle and set it to 360. Untick use composition shutter angle. That gives us maximum motion blur. Then with a playhead at the beginning, hit the stopwatch on position, which will add the first keyframe. Now set the height on that keyframe to bring the word down. I've ended up with 620. Then move the playhead along just over a second and hit this reset button, which gives us our second keyframe, but back in its original position. So there's our movement, but it's not very natural. So to make it more organic, expand the view with this arrow here, drag the line down so we can see better. Then right click the second keyframe, go to temporal interpolation and select ease in. Then grab this handle on the first keyframe and whack it right up. I've ended up with about 2,500. This creates a really fast start, which gives us that motion blur, slowing down to a smooth finish. Next up, let's fade it in. Move the playhead to the beginning. Go to opacity, make sure it's the opacity underneath transform. Hit the stopwatch on that and set it to zero. Move the playhead along in line with our position keyframes and move back down to opacity, hit the reset button on that. And that gives us our fade. Now we can stop there. If we create a preset now, we can add it to the rest of the clips easily and use it in future projects. So to do that, right click the effect we've created, select save as preset, name it and press OK. Then group the rest of the clips, go to effects, search for the preset we just made and drag it onto the rest of the clips. And we'll play that back and then we've got this effect. So for an up or down fade effect, what we did there is the quickest way to get to that. But if you want to be more creative, using this crop method will become a problem. So first I'll show you what that problem is and then how to get around it. So on caption sometimes I like to create a blur to focused effect as it fades in. To demonstrate that, I'll just add some Gaussian blur and I'll set it up in a similar way to how we set up the transform, but I'll set the blurriness on the first keyframe to 40 and then reset it to zero for the second keyframe. I'll then do the same as we did before, Right click the effects, in this case it's both the transform and the Gaussian blur effect. Press control and click both of those. Save as preset, so they save together as a preset. Name it, click OK, then group the other clips. Search for the new effect we just created with the blur. Drag that onto all the clips. This creates a blur to focused effect as it fades in. The problem with that is once it's full screen, you'll see that the crop marks actually crop out the blur. And if I grab a glow effect from the Solid Coast preset pack, so I'll just search for a solid glow and then drag that to the clip. As you can see, the problem is even more obvious now, and if we drag the effects to all the clips, it looks like this. So we don't want that, and also if we want to move left or right, we get this. And even though we can get round that by creating more nests, then we've got nests inside of nests, it gets very complicated. But there is another way, here's method two. So starting from scratch with your one text clip on the timeline. For this method, we need to see the rulers on the edge of the monitor. Go to view and make sure show rules is ticked. This is how it looks if it's unticked. But when it's ticked, you can see these measurement lines along the borders. And if you hover over these lines, then click and drag, you get these guidelines. And all I'll do is grab a few and line them up with the ends of the words. And then one there is a baseline guide, and you'll see why in a sec. Select the sentence and delete all words other than the first one. Animate. Now select the clip, press Alt and drag to duplicate onto the second track. 
and with the second clip selected, retype the word. So instead of animate, it's now captions. Grab the selection tool and drag the word along. To keep it locked on the same height, press shift and drag as you go along. So we're using those guidelines to show us where to place the words and same process for the next two. Now go to view, hide the guides and we're ready to add effects. I'm just gonna hide them rulers too. And as before on the timeline, stagger the clip so the words come in one after the other. Then move up to effects. We've already got a preset there that we made earlier. We'll choose the one with the blur, group the clips and drag the effect onto all of them. That gives us this. And then to add an outro animation, rather than add the effect to all the clips, group select them, right click, nest them, name them, press OK. And I want the outro effect to appear as if it's moving up almost as the intro effects are happening. And I don't want the outro effect to last too long after the words have come in. So I'll shorten the clip, then we'll head to effects, grab transform again, drag that to the nest, press the effects icon, change the shutter angle to 360, untick use composition shutter angle. That gives us maximum motion blur. Move the playhead to where you want the effect to begin. Hit the stopwatch on position. Move the playhead to the end of the clip and adjust the position so the text moves up for the outro. Expand the view, right click the first keyframe, select temporal interpolation and then ease out. Click on the second keyframe and if you can't see the handles, go up to the three lines here and select pin to clip. That allows you to scroll along past the keyframe. We can now see the handle, grab that, whack it right up and then we've got a nice motion. Then move the playhead back to the first keyframe, move down to opacity, hit the stopwatch on that, set it to 100, move along to the end again and set the opacity to zero. Now move up to effects, search for Gaussian blur, drag that onto the nest, jump back into effect controls. With the playhead at the end of the clip, hit the stopwatch on blurriness, set that to 40, move the playhead back to the earlier keyframe and reduce the blurriness to zero. So now we've got the words coming in separately, but moving out together. And now since this method doesn't have the cropping issues, let's see what else we can do. So first I wanna remove the effects that we've already added before we add new effects. And a quick way to do that is group select them, right click, go to remove attributes, untick motion, leave the rest and press okay. That removes all the effects but keeps the position of the clips in place. So I want to add a diagonal intro for the first word so that it comes up from the bottom left and moves in diagonally up and to the right. So I'll move up to effects and jump into the Solid Coast Essentials text pack and grab this one here, text in up right. I'll drag that onto the first word and then we've got this. And since we've got no cropping to deal with, we can experiment with different directions on the words and see what we get. And to do this, I'll drop back into the text pack to grab some different direction presets. I'll just adjust the clips to make the words come in a bit sooner and then maybe we'll animate these words out. So I'll choose a spot that I want them to animate out by. I'll move the playhead to the cut point, press Ctrl K to cut the clip. I'll delete those remaining bits there and then I'll grab an outro preset to drag onto the clips. Since I want them all to animate out at the same time, rather than have four separate effects on each clip doing the same thing, I'll nest the clips and add an outro effect to that one nest. Maybe this one here, text out down. Let's take a look at that. Cool. And then perhaps we'll add some glow to finish it off. To do this, I'll duplicate the nest to add the glow effect to the bottom nest. Another preset from the pack here, solid glow. I'll just drag that onto that bottom nest. And now we've got a nice glow. Maybe let's change the color of the glow. To do that, click the effect controls on that bottom nest, head down to tint and adjust the color on matte white too. Maybe I'll change that to a blue. And then maybe instead of just having a blue glow, if I hide the top layer to make the whole thing blue, you get this vibe. So you get the idea, basically separate the clips, then create or add whatever effects you want to animate each word. Some of the presets I used here are from the Solid Coast Essentials text pack, which is what I use on text to save me loads of time. If you want to save yourself some time, the link's in the bio, grab yourself a pack.